Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Today's lecture is going to be about duplicating impression materials. Let's move on to the contents of today's lecture. We will be discussing why duplication of original cast is important. What are the different duplicating materials? What are the types or classification of duplicating materials? What is the composition of commonly used duplicating material which is agar? What are the advantages and if disadvantages of agar duplicating material and other duplicating materials? And at the end of this lecture, there will be a video uh, which will be showing you how to duplicate a dental cast. Now moving on to the slide which says why duplication of original cast is important. In preparing partial injures, a duplicate should be made of the cast uh, of the stone cast or the plaster cast of the patient's mouth. So once you have taken an impression, see in this slide, once you have taken the impression, what you do is you pour the impression material using a dental stone or dental plaster and then a dental cast is made. You can ignore the base of this cast because it's not neat enough but this is a dental cast that is formed and sometimes when you are fabricating a partial denture you need to duplicate this dental cast right what it, what can be the reasons the three reasons for duplication of original cast include uh, in, they include preserving the original cast now you can preserve the original cast and you can use a duplicated cast for different lab procedures second the cast on which the wax pattern of the metal framework is to be formed must be made from a refractory investment right now when you are designing or when you are planning a, to fabricate a cast partial denture which means that the components of the partial denture the metallic components will be made with the process of casting now when uh, the wax pattern is fabricated this wax pattern and this whole cast and wax pattern assembly will be undergoing very high temperatures so the plaster and dental stone that we commonly use in dental lab cannot withstand high temperatures the high melting temperatures of cold and base metal alloys which are in hundreds and thousands so you need to make a cast uh, with a refractory investment material which is able to withstand high temperatures right so you can duplicate the original cast stone or plaster cast of the patient and the duplicated cast can be made with a refractory investment on which you can form the wax pattern and then that cast can be taken into the procedure of casting and it because it can withstand high temperatures so this can be a reason of duplication of cast and the third reason is the original cast is needed to check for the accuracy of metal framework and for processing the uh, plastic portion or acrylic portion of partial denture so once after the wax pattern when the cast has when the um, after the wax pattern when the procedure of casting has been carried out and the wax pattern has been replaced by the metal portion by the process of casting you need to check the accuracy of this metal framework on a cast so original cast must be preserved so you can check the accuracy of this metal framework because the duplicated cast which was made with the, refract the refractory invest material has been discarded in the process of casting so these are three reasons you have to preserve the original cast and because the original cast is needed for checking, checking the accuracy of metal framework and to fabricate the plastic or acrylic portion of partial denture and because uh, when you're making wax pattern for a metal framework you need a cast which should be of refractory investment so it can withstand high temperatures so you duplicate the original cast and the duplicated cast is uh, made using refractory investment material now what are duplicating materials the most common duplicating material is agar hydrochloride impression material what are other materials alginate plastic gel polyvinyl chloride gel uh, you can use silicone impression material and you can use polyethers they all have been used as duplicating materials but commonly used is agar now what are what are the types or what is the classification duplicating materials there are of two types type 1 is thermoreversible which means they are reversible and type 2 are non-reversible in type 1, type 1 thermoreversible there are two classes class 1 is hydrocolloid and class 2 is non-aqueous so class 1 is also called as aqueous or hydrocolloid and class 2 is non-aqueous and again type 2 non-reversible impression uh, duplicating materials are classified as class 1 and class 2 class 1 hydrocolloid and no, uh, class 2 non-aqueous 
In the category of type 1 thermoreversible, which means they are reversible, class 1 hydrocolloid will include agar because agar is a hydrocolloid and it's a reversible material and it basically forms sol and gel uh, by changing the temperature. And type 1 class 2 non aqueous thermoreversible will include polyvinyl gels, which was mentioned in the pre previous slide polyvinyl chloride gel or plastic gels. These gels are reversible, but they are non aqueous. Then type 2 non then type 2 non reversible will include a class 1 hydrocolloid which is alginate it's a non reversible hydrocolloid and class 2 non aqueous uh, will include silicone impression materials they are non aqueous and they are definitely non reversible now moving on to the next slide which is composition of the commonly used agar duplicating material. The composition is very similar to the agar hydrochloride impression materials, but a greater portion of water is used in agar duplicating material. And it's basically diluted one to three times its weight of water. So this agar duplicating material primarily contains definitely agar, water, contains borax so that it can increase the strength of agar impression duplicating material. The fourth one is salts are added to accelerate the setting of investment material so once you've taken the impression uh, duplicating impression with agar duplicating material you would definitely pour the investment material and to accelerate the setting of that impression salts are added in the agar duplicating material then preservatives are added to prevent growth of mold on the impression and glycerin or glycol they are added to prevent water loss from the gel this was the composition of agar duplicating material. What are the advantages? Number one, they are reversible, so they can be used a number of times. Secondly, they may be continuously stored in a sol form, uh, in a sol state at 54 to 66 degrees centigrade, and then where needed, and then when they are needed, they can be used easily. Once the material is set, when the when the agar is set and it changes from sol to gel form, this hardened gel form can be chopped up, it can be reheated and it can again be converted into sol form and it can be stored. And this storage and reusage can be done up to 20 times. This storage procedure can be done up to 20 times before the material is discarded. Third advantage is that they do have adequate strength and elasticity or elastic properties to duplicate undercut areas. And fourth advantage is that the accuracy of agar hydrochloride duplicating impression material or duplicating material is also satisfactory if proper technique is followed. What are the disadvantages? Firstly, the set material is a gel and it is therefore subjected to dimensional changes if stored in air and water and if left unattended. Best storage conditions, 100% relative humidity. And the best procedure is to pour the refract, duplicate refractive cast as soon as possible. You know, hydrocolloids, agar and alginate, they undergo the process of uh, synergesis and imbibition. They absorb water, which is imbibition, and they release water, which is synergesis. This may lead to shrinkage or uh, expansion of the impression of the duplicating material and may cause dimensional changes. And second disadvantage is that agar, since it's a polysaccharide, it gradually hydrolyzes at storage temperatures and this hydrolysis may uh, cause a loss of elasticity and strength. What are the disadvantages and advantages of some other duplicating materials? Alginate, the disadvantage is that it's irreversible and advantage is that it does not require any heating or storage equipment. Polyvinyl chloride gels, they are, the, the, the disadvantage is that they are non-elastic and advantage is that they have high strength, they are reversible and they have high chemical stability. So they permit a large number of duplications. And silicone and polyether uh, duplicating impression materials, the disadvantage is that they are expensive and they are irreversible and they are non-aqueous. This is a short video on hydrocolloid duplication and articulating. Hydrocolloid is a wonderful duplicating material. It makes nice molds and accurate. We use it in the dental lab for making models for partials. Hydrocolloid comes in a big container and it's solid. You just have to chop it up. I chopped mine up. This is enough for two models. I took an algae impression of a friend's mouth. Now these are going to be master models. I casted these in green stone, which is dye stone. 
I'm not going to articulate are the masters. I want to save them. I place the master models in water. And I place the container of hydrocolloid in the microwave. And I set the timer for 12 minutes. These things here are hydrocolloid or duplicating flask. This is used mainly for duplicating models. Here I'm placing ropes of wax. This is like sticky wax, just to make the seal better. These are older flasks, many years of use, thousands and thousands of duplications. The timer stopped on the microwave. I take out the hydrocolloid and I stir. The best thing about hydrocolloid, it's reusable. As soon as it sets up and hardens and you make your cast, you just chop it up and reuse it. There may be some small chunks of hydrocolloid that didn't quite melt, but it should be okay. I place the wet master models on the base of the hydrocolloid flask, and then I put the top on. I press down firmly to make sure it seals right. I go around the flask with a knife kind of press the seal of the rope wax in place. I simply pour the hydrocolloid into the flask. You notice that you see some chunks, but this will be fine. And you can use like Tupperware bowls to do the same process. You don't have to have flask. I have done this several times with making creature teeth. After filling the flask, I will take the flask and I will place them in some cool water, kind of a water bath. Now it will go up to about halfway of the flask. It depends on how cold the water is. You can put some ice cubes in there, but it usually takes about 45 minutes in regular water. Then it's time to demold. You just scrape off the excess where it might have flowed underneath the model. Just remove it. Now to remove the master models, you start from the back and you pry them up. Now this may damage the back of the hydrocolloid, but it will be fine. If the hydrocolloid comes out of the flask, it will be fine. Just place it back. I rinse out the molds with water. Now I like my molds wet. And sometimes it might have a little bit too much water and I just tilt it out. But I use it for like a lubrication for the stone to flow better. I'm using a small vibrator to help this stone to flow off my knife. And this is the way I've always poured up models. The strange thing about hydrocolloid is, is when you pour up the model, you just simply pour it up, you know, let it work off the knife. The stone will flow easy. But it's somewhat hard to put a bubble in this material. And that's what's so neat about hydrocolloid. I fill the mold up to the top and smooth it with a knife, flat. And now I'll repeat the same process with the lower master mold. And another thing about hydrocolloid, you can actually cast using poor dental acrylic. And it works out well. I've done several teeth this way. I have both flasks poured. Now I'll allow this to set up for 20 minutes. That's how long it takes for dental stones set up. I remove the hydrocolloid from the hydrocolloid flask to simply pop it out. Then I start tearing away the hydrocolloid. This will break off easy.
This is the upper master model duplication. And with the lower model, I can check the byte, and there's the byte, and it's correct. Now I just take the pieces of hydrocolloid, wash off any residue of old dried stone, and put it in the container and chop it up and reuse it. Here's duplications of the master models.